But really, what a really cool lucid dream, though, eh? Yeah, man. So, um, well, yeah, <laughs> look, let's start from the beginning. Um, so, David, we have talked, in fact, we, I, I've interviewed you about the potential of healing physical ailments through the lucid dream. And we've discussed that maybe it's a combination of the placebo effect, of visualization, of uh, the power of belief, all of these things. And just last week, you uh, hit me up on WhatsApp very excitedly to tell me that you had had this lucid dream where you had healed a knee injury that you had sustained from tennis or was preventing you playing tennis. I, I from remember. tennis, but also preventing me playing. Perfect. So share that with us, David. Tell, tell me the story. All right. Well, well what had happened is uh, I... I I've been playing a lot of tennis. You know, Scotland got a sudden flurry of sunshine, <laughs> and and we were allowed to play tennis. I I was down at the courts, and just I think I run around like a sixteen year old when I'm on the tennis court, and and I think I just, you know, from day after day, I just I just twisted my knee a little bit to the point that I felt my leg just give way, and it was really painful. And I and I tried to play the next. A couple of days later with it heavily strapped up I'm just very conscious that it was sore and the pain was still there even like a week later and I was, I was getting a wee bit kind of frustrated and I didn't set out to plan using a lucid dream but I just found myself uh, spontaneously becoming lucid yeah. and, and I suddenly thought because I you know you and I have talked about this scientific study that you're, that you're doing about using you know, lucid dreams for, for healing. And, and I suddenly remembered that idea when I became lucid. And, and so I, I asked, I, I asked, uh, I actually, I, I asked an angel and I was, in the sense I was asking my, what felt like my higher self. Yeah. And I said, please, could you show me a symbolic representation of the injury? Uh -huh. And immediately I saw three of those little milk containers. You know, when you go into a cafe and you ask, if people take milk, you ask for milk and you get these tiny little- Oh, the little brown plastic things. Plastic things, yeah. yeah. With a wee foil lid that probably have about one teaspoonful of, of milk. Yeah. And immediately I saw three of them mm -hmm. and then they were just emptied into a pan. And, and I'm thinking, Curious, interesting. And then I immediately had the thought, I immediately knew that this was a representation of my knee mm. and the milk was too runny and it needed to be more oily. Ah. And I just knew that for some reason in the dream, I just knew mm -hmm. that it needed to be oily. And then I just, in my hand appeared some kind of dropper with oil in it. Mm -hmm. And I just, I knew that I was just to drop some oil into it. And as soon as I dropped a few drops, the consistency of the milk just became, became more viscous and an oily nature. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the next thing I remember is waking up and getting out of bed and the pain was, was almost completely away. And as the day went on, it completely went and the injury was gone. I was able to play tennis uh, later <laughs> that day. And, and that, the speed of it even took me by surprise because I've used visualization a lot for different things including for little sporting niggles but that that surprised even me you know <laughs> okay so look you're you're the doctor right what do you make of this what how how do you explain that yeah well i mean usually when i write about uh, and teach about visualization it, what what i'm talking about is you know when, when you visualize something in its injured state, for example, what you want to visualize is turning that injured state into something that's healed. And you do it repetitively. And, and you know, 10 people visualizing the same injury would visualize it in different ways. So it doesn't really matter how you see it. What you're always doing in visualization, it's always really a symbolic representation of what you're visualizing. Mm -hmm. And so all that really matters is that you have a symbolic representation of something that is healed that's well uh, and so I've been teaching that for years and you do it repetitively uh, so I, I, really in the dream I did the same thing but what surprised me was how fast that it, I mean obviously it was a scientific study of one person you know a small sample size but e even then uh, I would still say what surprised me was the speed of it and I, and I think maybe when you're in that lucid state there's less awareness of other things taking up space in your consciousness yeah. and, and you're in a deeper 
psychological state. I'm guessing, I mean, you probably, you're the expert here, but I, I think being in that deeper state where all of my attention was focused on the change of symbol from illness to wellness. Yeah. And I just did it in that deep psychological state. I think, I wonder if that facilitated a faster a transformation that normally I've used visualization for sporting injuries and and I've I've saw a big change within you know three or four days mm. of maybe five or ten minutes mm. a day visualization so I'm wondering given the sample size of one person but still <laughs> I, I'm still wondering if the depth of it being in that kind of semi-trans state facilitated a much faster I mean what, what do you think yeah I think you've nailed it I think there are pro probably three main things that make lucid dream healing so uh, direct and powerful. One is your inner visualization already. You know, so if I'm visualizing the waking state, it would seem, I mean, you correct me wrong, but it feels like I have to go from conscious mind, outer world, and kind of it, the, the, the uh, affirmation or the visualization has to kind of permeate down into my unconscious. Mm. Um, but in the lucid dream, I'm already in the unconscious. So it's like you're there, the seeds mm. are on the deepest level. So I think maybe a combination of the fact you're in a visualization already, you're already in the unconscious mind, which is where you want the affirmation to land, where you want the intention to land. And then also, I mean, there's scientific stuff on the gamma wave frequencies and the brain's often in gamma when we're in a lucid dream. Um, oh, and then the Buddhist view, God, the, the Buddhist one is very simple. It's that in oh. the lucid dream state, you have seven times the power of consciousness. So you have 700% really? more, uh, yeah, power of consciousness is the term. Wow. So they say, you know, any prayer you say, any healing you do, any, uh, uh, you know, question you ask, the insight, wow. the healing, the depth uh, is going to be kind of seven times more powerful. So, yeah, wow. they would sum it up in that. So no wonder it worked, you know, maybe seven times as quick as than if you're done in the waking state. Who knows? That's incredible. That is absolutely incredible. Oh, actually, while we're here, can I, what, what, what would you say is the significance of me seeing milk cut at these little milk things. I don't know, man. When you said that, I was like calcium or something. But, you know, this is very old school, you know, just a, a kid growing up in the 80s, isn't it? I was kind of uh, programmed to think that milk has calcium. You're correct if I'm wrong. I think actually milk doesn't have as much calcium as certain vegetables and stuff. But yeah. I don't know. I thought for me, the connection was milk and bones. I mean, definitely the thing with the oil, right? That's got to be like lubrication of the joint. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. The kind of some sort of maybe as I was you know, visualizing that becoming lubricated. Yeah. Because actually here's how, here's how visualization works. Uh, the, the actual background mechanism for visualization is very similar to the background mechanism of placebo effect. Mm -hmm. when, when someone has a placebo effect, you believe something. What happens is your belief causes your brain and your body to produce the substances required mm -hmm. to deliver what you believe is supposed to happen, you know, within reason. Yeah. Uh, and so when you do visualization, the same type of mechanism, the same type of process unfolds that like you're visualizing something and that mobilizes the brain and body's natural resources mm. to deliver that mm. which you are imagining to be yeah. true. So maybe the, the oil there was mobilizing natural processes yeah. within the body uh, to produce whether it was oil or not would be, wouldn't matter, but natural processes to produce that lubricating effect, yeah. probably. Yeah, God, absolutely. And just as you're speaking, I forgot the other, of course, big thing about lucid dreaming is the neuroplasticity thing. That in non-lucid dreams, neuroplasticity isn't engaged. But once you become lucid, the right dorsolateral prefrontal cortex lights up, and basically the brain doesn't think you're dreaming anymore. The brain mm -hmm. thinks you're awake which is why the sports training studies in lucid dreaming work, which would be really interesting for your tennis too, to practice your serve or I don't know, whatever shot. Wow, well, I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's your next video. Um, so, I mean, in your case, it was, it was a very kind of metaphorical visualization, but still at some, at some level, you were in a state where the brain was laying down these neural pathways, which it wouldn't do in a non-lucid dream. So again, maybe that's adding to it as well. Um, but you know, it, the fact is it worked. This is the cool thing. It's like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we still don't actually know exactly how the placebo effect works, but we know it does work. And I think we can tie ourselves up in knots doing the same thing with lucid dreaming. Like, how does this stuff work? Like, is it this, is it that? Well, if it works and it does work, because I know you've shifted this chat forward because you're playing tennis this afternoon. <laughs> 
also healed is your knee. So it's like, this shit works, man. I mean, that's insane. And could it be that in our lifetime, yeah, we find the equation that, that says exactly why it works. And we find, mm. you know, we answer the hard con- the question of consciousness. I don't know, man. But I know yeah. that we've got this tool that is incredibly helpful and even more incredibly helpful when someone like you uses it because this is like first-hand account. It's not like our previous interview where I was giving you examples of people who'd done placebo healing and lucid dreaming and had had these, you know, physical healings. You've done it yourself. I mean, that's just so cool. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I'll have to be on my toes because the person I'm playing this afternoon is a former tennis pro. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, can you sneak in an afternoon nap before your game, have a quick lucid dream, be in there whacking your shot? <laughs> whatever you're doing, your serves, and then you'll be in uh, in top form. Yeah, I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, David, I just wanted to keep this short and sweet. I just wanted to grab it while it was still fresh from you. Uh, but let's, we can also mention that, because you mentioned it already, that you are consulting on the uh, Healing Lucid Dream Study that I'm doing with IONS, Institute of Noetic Sciences. That's happening in June. Uh, at the moment, our sample group for that will be uh, people working with PTSD, so a lot of veterans, in the West Coast of America. So if you're watching this video and you're interested in that, um, we still need to pass the ethics committee. Um, we just need to jump through some hoops at the ethics committee, but we're, we're bound to be able to jump through those hoops. Um, so if you are interested, just planting the seed that there may well be, not 100% confirmed now, but 99% confirmed, a study looking at lucid dream healing for PTSD in veterans. Uh, and we'll be looking for a sample size from the West Coast of America. And that'll be happening in June over a 10 day period through ION, the Institute of Noetic Sciences, and our wonderful Dr. David Hamilton is our consultant on that. So he'll be checking over the methodology and helping us when we um, uh, gather the data and all that kind of stuff. So it's so cool that not only is David on board, but he's on board after having a wicked healing lucid dream. (laughs) So thanks so much, David. What have you got coming up? What's next? Tell us about, oh, when does your book come out? The um, Why Woo Woo Works? Oh, the 21st of September. Is that not the same date as yours? Uh, mine's October, I think, so I'm a few October, years right, okay. later, yeah. Right, yeah, mine's end of Just September. Just tell us about that. Hey, well, I've basically taken a number of subjects that people tend to uh, call woo-woo and, and provided a scientific basis for, for why they work. Uh, and, you know, things that we call woo-woo, we, we call them woo-woo not because we're experts in the subject and we're calling it woo-woo with some degree of authority. It's because we're not experts and we actually don't know about the available research and understanding of, of things. So that's where I provided is that backup for things, you know, mainstream things like visualization, meditation, uh, but, and, but also I've went into things like Reiki and even dabbled in crystals from a Buddhist perspective. Wow. Uh, uh, for, from the use in Buddhism, you know, uh, as symbolic representations of mental clarity wow. and, and, and really derived the whole framework psychological framework from there plus some physical effects and then I've even gone into prayer mm. and uh, and you know I've even chucked in a mathematical equation <laughs> that predicts uh, the the importance of emotional connection and things like wow. enlightenment and prayer you know when I say equation it's ex- extraordinarily simple and obvious but uh, but I just had a play anyway it's you know it's you, for people that are non technical you don't even need to bother with the equation it's just there for people who find that kind of stuff interesting and i've even went into why it's why perception shapes reality Mm. uh, how perception shapes reality and what that might say about the law of attraction or what people call the law of attraction that's so cool man i mean i i i can't wait for the book i think a lot of people because the paradigm at the moment we're still in this kind of scientific materialist paradigm but we've got so many shifts happening there are so many people who like that's what they want. It's like, what is the science that backs up the woo-woo? That we yeah. know it works, but why does it work and how does it work? Yeah. So. Essentially, what, I, what I've tried to do is I see so much polarity in the world. It's mm-hmm. either this or it's that. Yeah. And, and so what I've, been, what I've done in the book, as I said, it's not just about West or East and what is best. It's saying, what about we take the best of that, the best of that, and we fuse them together. And sometimes, depending on the situation, a bit more of that is better. But other times, depending on the situation, a bit more of that is better. But rather than being that or that, you know, black or white, one or zero, this or that, what about fusing things? There? I think the, the solution to many of our problems in the world are not this or that, you know, a, you know, 
you know, east or west kind of thing, but mm. usually common ground, a fusion of the two. So one, the, the whole thrust of the book is to say, it doesn't have to be mainstream or complementary. It can actually be a fusion of both mm. and sometimes more of that and less of this and mm. sometimes more of that and less of this, depending upon the context. Mm. Dude, that sounds like absolute sense. I agree with you totally. Uh, when's the book out again? Uh, end of September, well, 21st of September. Brilliant. So check that out. Uh, Why We Will Works available everywhere that sells books. Thank <laughs> you so much, Dr. David Hamilton. Uh, looking forward to working together on the study in June with the uh, veterans and the PTSD um, healing. Yeah, have a great day, dude, and win that tennis match today with your wonderfully healed knee. <laughs> I'll do my best. Thanks a lot, mate. Have a Thanks good a day. Lot.